In this episode, we're gonna build a automatic gearbox. First, let's make a number in here that indicates the, the current gear. Just copy the kilometers and, and rename it. After you position it to where you want it, go to your game manager and add another text. Just to copy this line and uh, rename it. And instead of, fi uh, instead of refreshing it every single frame, because we clearly don't need it, we're gonna build another public function that we can call that we can call from from our controller from our uh, car controller class. Build build a public void function that simply replaces the text from the controller class. As you might have guessed, now we need to reference the the game uh, the game manager script from our controller class. That's very simple. Create a uh, public reference that references the game manager script that is attached to this game manager object and then simply just update the, the gears whenever whenever we upshift or downshift. So all we're doing is uh, updating the or executing this line of code whenever we upshift or downshift. We're simply using this line of code that references this block of code in here. Drag and drop your objects and hit play. Okay, as we can see, it updates when this updates. Okay, now let's make a a function that auto automatically changes the gears for us. So basically, a automatic uh, gearbox. But before we get into that, I want to answer somebody's question that says, "What I'm using for post processing? All I'm using for post." post-processing is uh, these three effects and by the way if you're building a video game that is going to run in mobile this is very expensive into the performance side so a quick test and it uses 60% just to run it so post-processing is not very nice to use in mobile devices okay so this is how we this is how I built the automatic gearbox. First I'm going to show you the manual gearbox. This is simply a uh, enum, enum that I simply just copied from the drive type and I modified it a little bit. So first I'm going to show you the manual that I made. And now we can see that it doesn't change the gear for uh, it doesn't change the gears itself. So we have to press it to change the gears. But well, it downshifts by itself, so it doesn't. So the rev limit, uh, the rev limiter doesn't go below one, because that's obviously, that's not realistic. So we upshift, and it lets us upshift until the the rev uh, limiter is above three thousand RPMs. And we can't upshift and uh, if it's too much. Okay, and now let's show the automatic gearbox. So we start at the zero, and now when it hits the 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 maximum, it automatically changes gears, and it also downshifts when we slow down, obviously. So the way I've achieved this. This is not perfect, by the way, because if the the engine is, if the the wheels are in the air, they will spin constantly, and the up uh, the and the shift will will go, and the gears will upshift by themselves. Let's open the the controller. Is as I said, I've I've made a new enum called gearbox gear change, and then I made a simple automatic and manual. So into the shifter class, all I did is. Uh, ask if the gear change is automatic obviously and then if it's manual in the automatic it checks the engine rpm it's if it's above the maximum gear change rpm and if the gear numbs don't hit the the limit of the the length because if they do they will go outside of the bounds of the array and that will crash our game so when this condition passes 
obviously it changes the gear. Into the manual we simply have a uh, key code. We simply have a key code that upshifts the gear and it obviously executes this function into the game manager that updates the, the gears. And the last thing I've made is this if statement that executes regardless of the gearbox if it's automatic or uh, manual. So it just simply downshifts. It checks if the minimum RPMs uh, fills this condition and then if the gear change, uh, if the current gear is above zero. Because if this goes below zero, as I said, it will crash our game. Okay, so if all the wheels are in the air, say we're jumping at the at a uh, ramp. Let's see. Let's hit the accelerator. Okay, so I'm accelerating, and now I'm in the air, and the and the current gear is fourth. We don't want that. We don't we don't want it to uh, to upshift. We want the the shifter to stay at the current gear when we fly. To to fix this uh, issue, all we have to do is check. If, uh, if all the wheels are grounded. So I built this function, this boolean function that returns a true or a false if all the wheels are grounded so that it checks when the gears are grounded to, to upshift or downshift and then to fix the reversing problem I simply did a check if the wheels are going forward or backwards. If the wheels are going forwards that means the, the value that we get in here is positive. If they're going backwards, the value in here is negative. So we're just simply running a check. And then this if statement checks if the wheels are going forward. And it checks if the value, uh, if the boolean is already changed. So if it is already changed, then it doesn't uh, update the, 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 the UI. Because as we know, updating the UI is kind of pricey into the performance figure. So now, let's hit play and see that if we go backwards, we are seeing the reverse. Now let's go forward and now the, uh, the gears are going forward. Okay, now let's uh, upshift. Okay, it, it shifts uh, quite smoothly. So now we have a simple problem that is still accelerating, but it's accelerating in the gear zero. Now, as we know, we don't have a zero gear. So that's also a simple fix. All you have to do is go to the game manager and add this gear num or into brackets and add plus one. Uh, hit control save and uh, try it out okay so now we start accelerating at the gear one and we go back at the reverse so we don't have zero gear